everybody, um, welcome to another unboxing video. Uh, this is Edgar Quadra, Solution Consultant here at Star Telecom. Um, as well on the on the video today, we have Randall and Alexander, our usual uh, trio. And today, what we're going to be discussing is the February 2023 releases. All right, so let's just get into it. Um, so first off, February 1st, uh, we have a few under the contact center uh, section. First one is participant names and avatars in Genesis Messenger. Um, so if any of you, any of our um, listeners right now use the, the chat window in Messenger, uh, notice now there's um, our avatar and the name within the uh, Genesis Messenger environment. Um, so let's just double check that it is the correct meaning. Um, actually, no. I apologize. Um, this is for a web messaging. So the agent's names and um, photos will display directly inside the messaging um, widget on a website. That's a, a new feature there and to add the image and, and name. So that's part of the communicate. So under the agent's profile, what they set here and their name, will be displayed directly inside the message app. Oh, again, I apologize everyone for that. I uh, misread, misunderstood that feature. Uh, next one here is sentiment data and topic trends view inside um, the tropic frames view. So if I go back to our performance view here, and I personally really like this particular performance view under topics. below here and we go to topic trends and then now you just add that particular sentiment column and then you'll be able to see based on the topic what is the trend value uh, what is the sentiment value for that particular topic that's being picked up by uh, Genesis Cloud uh, via the sentiment analysis um, incredibly powerful feature um, I know I like this kind of is more in line your wheelhouse in the QA environment, right? But uh, uh, as a QA manager or business owner, right, uh, starts looking at these particular trends, which particular topics are having positive or negative sentiment in the contact center. Uh, exactly. So yeah, incredibly good insight. Uh, I think that it's also important to mention that uh, the combination of different topics and let's say the average of those sentiments can also be a really good way to show um, the data analyst, the, 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 the quality admin in the company, the business manager, the operations manager, simply the team lead, uh, what is happening with their calls. And it's just another way of gaining kind of, kind of info and intel from the calls without actually having to listen to the calls necessarily, mm -hmm. you know, just to get a broader picture of the heck is happening pretty much in our calls and how are these combined topics kind of kind of kind of um resulting in or rather in which sentiment they're resulting so i feel that this is a really powerful uh, kind of analytics tool um and if we combine that with some some additional drill down analysis or any um i don't know maybe maybe data crunching in, a, in an external bi tool then you really get a whole picture of okay this is this is kind of kind of um, the screenshot or the cutoff for of our operations at this point. Right. Yeah. Very true. Very true. Okay. Um, let's move on to the next one here. Platform. So now, anytime Genesis makes updates to the terms and conditions policies and security policy, those updates will be relayed to um, us users. Us as a partner, you as a, a Genesis Cloud user via email notifications. Um, so you can subscribe to those. Uh, you can subscribe to them and then you'll get an email whenever those new features or new um, updates to their policies have been uh, published. Hit some deprecations and some general announcements for uh, February 1st. Uh, first, um, sad day anyone still on Windows 8 or companies still using Windows 8 and more specifically the desktop app um, that is no longer being supported 
uh, by Genesis. Um, so that is actually up and coming uh, May 31st, 2023. So word of warning, um, if you are one of in that unique situation, uh, um, Alex, then um, go ahead and upgrade your windows. And just, I, just wanting to add, uh, yeah. if the company by any, due to whatever reason, might not want to change to a different version, a new version of Windows, there is always the possibility to simply use um, the browser, um, the browser app, basically. And that's a good point. Um, I think it's this month where now the web browser is supporting um, recordings. Uh, desktop recordings, right? So again, one of the main reasons why to use the desktop app is for screen recordings. And so now um, I think it is for an upcoming release where you'll be able to now record screens using the browser app. So um, again, making that transition easier for them. Um, and then a new uh, an S SDK. Um, has been removed um, SDK used for predictive engagement. So um, if you're using that and using that particular SDK, again, kind of a niche maybe audience, but just to keep in mind there. And um, API endpoint changes. So I know um, last year they did, uh, Genesis released this bring your own keys. So you're able to manage that. So the API that was um, used for the legacy local key management um, has been um, deprecated. All right, let's move on now uh, to the next release for February. All right, so for February 8th, let's get into the first one here. And it is for um, automatic knowledge surfacing with Genesis Cloud Agent Assist. So some of you may or may not be aware that Genesis is really pushing um, and really developing their internal AI tools. Um, and this one specifically here is uh, related to um, Agent Assist for digital interaction, so web messaging. Um, but this overall is a theme where Genesis, within one monthly licensing, given us, the customers, us as partners, these AI tools without having to plug in any other external um, AI tools from, let's say, the App Boundary or something else there. I um, mean, it's make it incredibly easy to deploy these AI tools, agent assist tools for the agent and for the customers. So now using automatic knowledge surfacing inside the agent assist uh, panel, um, agents can look at those articles that get suggested based on the chat transcription or the chat um, conversation going back and forth. And then they can use that to copy and paste. Uh, so one, increasing the agent's efficiency, average handle time, customer um, customer experience, so they can get those answers a lot quicker. Um, and just making, I think, the agents uh, much more confident in doing their jobs and knowing that they don't have to click around to different screens or have different knowledge bases up. Uh, Genesis is doing a lot of that legwork for the agent and using very powerful tools that can be launched um, in a matter of hours, really. Okay, so let's actually get that going here. So I'm going to have, um, I have a chat window here for our um, example, and I'm also gonna bring over the agent uh, screen here. So this is our website here, and I'm gonna be browsing this website. Um, so I launched chat, um, and it, the chat bot is quickly um, engaging me with a particular question, help build uh, building out of business codes. But I just wanna know um, what uh, SIP services do you have? Okay. Um, so then now as the agent, I'm gonna go to my interactions here. I'm gonna put myself to on queue. I'm gonna get that chat request. And let me just um, make this a little bit better here for everyone to see here. So what chat services do I have? As the agent, um, you can specify what default panel you want your agents to uh, to load during this chat interaction. Right now, I have it can responses, but we can very easily have the default panel is the smart advisor. So this is the um, this is now the agent assist actually presenting uh, different articles for the agent to either uh, read or interact and send to the to the customer. All right. So. I, I had it kind of already here, but if I go um, another example I have here is um, what are your telecom rates? 
What are your telecom rates? So you can see here that Genesis, um, based on keywords that you pre-program here, um, different articles that will bring up and help the agent uh, fulfill a lot quicker. So for the first one for SIP trunking, I'm going to open up that card. I'm going to copy that and send it over. And I'm also going to, that was a good article uh, to be presented. So that's now your agents are able to provide feedback to say this was a good article for this scenario. That's where the AI learning engine comes into play. It will start presenting that knowledge article uh, sooner based on the scenarios that it's capturing and learning from. Yeah, so I'm going to pause there, guys. Sorry, just a question on on, uh, on this. Um, how customizable um, are these um, keywords? So can you actually program the AI to, to always give you one specific article on this selected phrase or catchphrase or whatever? Um, Is it more uh, one specific automated? article? So, I mean, the AI tool is trying its very best to bring up uh, related articles. So one, me as an agent providing feedback that, you know, for this SIP services question, this was the best article. I provided that feedback. So it's kind of, I think it's kind of, I, I try to do a catch all based on those keywords, but how mm -hmm. easy it is to um, actually and feedback to streamline that is, um, there's a lot of powerful tools inside the knowledge uh, workbench. So let me just bring that up here quickly. So yeah, but, but it's not a black box. So it it's is not a black box, box. No. no. Awesome. Yeah, Alec, thanks for that question. Um, so under the knowledge articles, um, this is where one, uh, you'll be able to uh, create those knowledge based articles, but also two, to see what the effectiveness is. Um, mm -hmm. So if this is the SIP trunken article that was brought up, so I can click on edit and then I'm able to one edit the conversation or the phrase there, but then this is where the phrasing comes into play. Right, so I can start adding new phrases um, as the article starts getting more feedback, right? So one of the feedback mechanisms is this is 100% or it's lower. So actually I can click on that and I can see um, where these comments are being captured and where this article is being used in the conversation. But then also the other tool that Genesis provides is the optimizer. So each um, knowledge base, um, Workbench, these are called workbenches on the top here, will have its own optimizer panel where you'll be able to see top queries, unanswered queries, right? So if that SIP question came in mm -hmm. and there was no article to match it, this list would be populated here, providing you as the, the, the knowledge guru there at the at the customer end to be able to use this data and, and make more knowledge articles that'd be useful for your agents. So awesome. short you. answer, powerful, a um, lot of tools to help you um, put AI into your uh, workspace a lot quicker. Randall, you have something? Yeah, yeah I, I just, yeah, I wanted to add that it, uh, agent assist type applications, knowledge applications are not new to the contact center world. They've been around for many, many years. Um, and I, I've used them. Uh, I know mine and my colleagues have used them. However, this is a step forward in a couple of different ways. Number one, it's embedded inside the ecosystem of Genesis Cloud. So not, it's it's not a, another application out on its own. You, you could see, um, as Edgar was talking about it, how it's embedded in the app. It's easy to manage. You can see the questions uh, that are being asked that don't have responses for them, this and that. So management is a lot easier. From the agent perspective, it's, it follows that mantra of single pane of glass approach. It's not enough in today's contact center to have the tools available to the agent. You have to have those tools available to, to the agent where they're easy to use and easy to find and functional. And you know, having another tab that they need to click to uh, in another browser or another application isn't acceptable now, especially where we have agents working from home or working where they don't have multiple monitors or they're maybe using their home PC in some type of a virtual environment. It's, it's critically important to think about the applications and how they interact with the, the, 
the agent experience. So just to sum that all up, if there are customers out there that have legacy knowledge systems, they may want to consider using this moving forward because you could, there could be some cost savings around licensing. If you already have the licensing necessary to do this in Genesis Cloud, number one. And number two, it you get all those advantages I just talked about. Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys, for that input. All right. So next to keep in line with the AI tools built in Genesis Cloud, they're they're really developing a much more rich, um, richer tools to respond um, within the web uh, web messaging application. So this is now four bots that you can build within Genesis Cloud incredibly easy through the architect tool. Well, now you can leverage the responses of um, um, rich media, so images and, and actually carousels. So in here, um, I can go ahead and uh, quickly show you here. But now as your customers are, are interacting with the Genesis bot, well, let's give them a lot of options. So maybe you're on a particular website and they're asking questions about a particular product. The bot can reply back now with that product and also maybe similar other products. And they can be displayed in this carousel view. And those carousel views can have call to action items, uh, buttons. Um, so buy now, talk to somebody, uh, so forth. So incredibly rich now, um, uh, or incredibly rich or very interactive um, interactions that your customers can have with the bots that you create. Keeping them on your website, hopefully to um, gain a new customer or enhance that customer experience with these tools that Genesis has. Okay, next one here is images and email addresses as hyperlinks in knowledge-based articles. So I just talked about knowledge base in the workbench in Agent Assist, and that's where a lot of the learning is coming from. Um, but then those exact same knowledge-based articles can be used by the bot, by a Genesis Cloud bot. So um, it's now giving you the ability to add these more hyperlinked elements inside bot responses. So maybe one of the examples is, hey, what are your store hours? And they're talking to a bot. The bot can reply back with a hyperlink or even an email address and they can click on that and fulfill that request. Um, so again, enriching the ability uh, for bots and your agents or, or self-serve options through the bot experience. Um, and then here's another task that makes development uh, of the dialogue engine bot much more easier, reusable tasks. Um, so very quickly here, uh, reusable tasks in Genesis Cloud um within the architect tool um, so if you guys some of you may not be familiar with it but i'm just going to launch architect very quickly and, and i'm going to go to my bot flows and let me see if i have a quick little demo here that i can uh, open up here going to quickly open that up here and what reusable tasks allow you to do which i don't have one here but i can go ahead and maybe i built a, a good flow in in this particular area in here i can go ahead and reuse that in other flows so i can copy that into uh, my reusable task and then next time i'm developing or more further down my flow for the bot i can go ahead and recopy those uh, particular uh, tools um, so incredibly powerful and being able to uh, rapidly deploy a bot is being almost every day, every month, um, incredibly easy uh, for people to start playing with and implementing uh, bot features in their Genesis Cloud environment. Okay. Encrypt and decrypt data in architect flows. So this one's interesting. Um, managers and administrators can add their AWS KMS symmetric a key in the Genesis Cloud and then use that key to encrypt or decrypt um, action in architect flows, existing bots and encrypt and decrypt data. Uh, this feature adds additional layer of security to customer data. So um, if I'm reading that, understanding that correctly, when you have a, a, an interaction going through um, an, uh, going through an architect, so an inbound flow, it could be digital, voice um, or outbound, in, for example, here, as it's passing through those flows in architect, um, you can you can encrypt that data um, 
in transit during the, the, the particular architect flow, um, and you can encrypt it using your own provided um, AWS keys. Um, so a practical application, guys, you may have to help me out here. So maybe I'm a healthcare sure. provider and um, I'm doing a self-serve action uh, for my healthcare um, customer. Um, if that even makes sense, maybe they want to get some lab results through a self-serve IVR. That whole interaction can be encrypted, additionally encrypted, um, using your own AWS keys. Does that make sense? So what I see is, well, kind of the best use case is just what you said, but I will, how I would do it if, if um, I would be using AWS for my business, w whenever there is a uh, transfer to a secure flow, just activate the additional encrypt and decrypt data, well, just encryption of the data as soon as you get transferred to a secure flow, because you're probably going to give away your credit card number, name, last name, home address, so on and so forth. So I think yeah. that that's kind of definitely the way to go. I don't, I'm, I'm not sure if uh, this, if the encryption can be done also on, you know, just standard voice calls while you're uh, talking with an agent. Not, I'm not sure if that's covered as well. Well, but I know through recording policies, you can apply that when you want to archive. You can archive to an AWS uh, S3 instance and that encryption, you can use your own keys. So you can do a okay. post call. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. All right. Let's move on here. Um, mine topics from message transcripts. So administrators can now mine topics from messaging transcripts in addition to call and chat transcripts. Um, so this feature enables analysis, like Alex, uh, mm -hmm. to use uh, topic mining. Uh, oh, sorry, mine data to create new topics and improve existing topics and minimize the need to reply on business process knowledge and manual messaging review. Um, so if I quickly, let's see if this article will kind of walk us through here. So create a new topic miner. Um, you can go to this article in here, um, but you, you'll you be able to open up and launch that topic minder tool. Um, and then now for messaging, so if I use my previous example for that SIP transaction, um, you can use this particular tool now to monitor those message transactions for particular keywords. Um, and then once it's running it and creating those values for you, uh, you'll be able to get reports and start maybe um, using those topic miners. Uh, maybe you can draw knowledge to create new articles for your agents or new self-serve options uh, within your IVR or a new self-serve bot uh, based on this large conversation data that's being gathered by Genesis Cloud. Okay. Awesome, awesome feature. Uh, yeah, so again, this is all these tools, especially for this month, February 8th, is um, can, I think, very, very rapidly revolutionize a business um, and bring them right up to the bleeding edge of AI tools in your contact center without, I think, being very um, flashy or overwhelming. Um, all these tools, I think, um, with the proper rollout and thought process can enhance that agent experience, which in then turn enhances the customer experience. Um, and then intent miner, uh, German. So that same intent miner, um, is now being supported, uh, for, uh, the language, um, uh, German language. Okay. All right, everybody, let's move on now. Let's go on to February 15th, a week for releases and we'll dive into those. So again, in the contact center, uh, arena, uh, status metrics for multiple queues on dashboard, uh, performance dashboards. So contact centers and managers and supervisors can now view uh, status metrics across multiple queues in one widget in the performance dashboards. This feature displays agent metric statuses in real time across multiple queues in one widget and allows managers and supervisors to allocate resources effectively. Previously, those widgets displayed agent statuses for only one queue at a time. Um, okay, so very quickly here, if, um, if some of you are not familiar with the dashboards in Genesis Cloud, um, which I think is a 
really good, great tool. Um, we're all familiar with that wall board um, in contact center spaces. Well, that wall board now can exist inside the agent screen. Um, and what this new feature is referring to, I'm just gonna go ahead and edit a blank one here. When I go ahead and add a new widget type, um, let's say agent for all agents, that is for all queues. I want to filter by queues. Now I can go ahead and add multiple queues to this one particular widget, right? So um, add. And for some of us that are not familiar to this building of this queue, and uh, so this widget is a brand new experience as well. Um, so it's much more streamlined. It's much more, let's say, wizard uh, driven mm -hmm. or guided as opposed to, hey, here's your widget. Give you more free reign. This is now streamlining it. And I think this is also allowing um, users that may might have found the dashboard tool and widget building intimidating. This is now streamlines the process. And I particularly like it quite a bit. Um, right. So what is your metric now for this uh, percentage based or time based? Um, again, I, I, this is in line more with um, Alec and, and notice what's really cool here now is uh, Genesis is also filtering out does it uh, these metrics to see if, if they um, complement each other or they make sense to group these metrics together again, add into the conversation of it's now walking you through the process of creating your own dashboard widget instead of just giving you free range and maybe not knowing that some of these metrics um, make sense to add with one another. Um, this, yep. And that was, I think in my experience, is more trial and error, where now it's much more streamlined. Yeah, uh, so, and I just said that, um, well, the, the what was actually missing, and you just selected the metrics that are not agent status, uh, status related, basically. But this is uh, this improvement goes to you know you want to see how many not responding agents you have for a number of queues, right? Mm -hmm. Edgar, if you just go back to the edit of that widget and just remove abandon and hold and add not responding, for example, not responding agents or pretty much any any agent named. Uh, metric you can select only one and if you click add uh you're going to see how many not responding agents you have per uh per queue basically and this is this is the new thing this is what did not exist and this is where you can actually go and and, and stack those and actually see okay you can get all all the agent status metrics and, and data at a glance on one dashboard which was not the case previously and you actually had to go over to uh, to the um, to the grid and expand the grid to be I don't know the maximum seven times seven in order to get all of these queues and all of the metrics that you want to see and it still wasn't enough because yeah. you, you could have one queue uh, per widget if you're placing any agent status metric on it which was mm -hmm. really a miss on the Genesis side for a couple of years in my in my personal opinion but right now this is this is what all call centers need and want to have right excellent thank you okay support for capitalization and punctuation and native voice transcription for english transcripts okay so genesis is now um, going through um i think um, english school on their side and <laughs> are now um Sorry, that was kind of a, maybe a, a weird joke there. But now, based on the translation, it's able to pick up where capitalization can happen, periods and question marks and commas where applicable. Um, so I can't even imagine how they're doing that on the back end, what technology they're doing to add these more grammar um, tools in the transcriptions. That kind of actually blows my mind, where they're using now AI to listen to the trend, to listen to the voice, translate that into the text, and also add appropriate commas and question marks, and, and capitalization. That's pretty wild. Twenty twenty three. 
Uh, sorry. Um, that's just pretty amazing. <laughs> Im improved sentiment analysis for English. So going back to this tool here, uh, the accuracy of being able to pick up those tones and, and, and positive and negative um, tones of the call, sentiment of the call, positive and negative um, uh, points in the conversation. Genesis is improving that model um, to, to be able to tech and provide better, more accurate rates. Okay, so again, a very powerful tool. For those of us that are not familiar with sentiment analysis, one, uh, first you need Genesis 3 or the add-on. Uh, but when you go ahead and start working with that, uh, maybe I uh, can get a picture here. Yeah. So now when I start working in here, um, Genesis is one translating that voice timeline to text and then using uh, AI learning and the voice and the audio to pick up and, and mark in the timeline where those positive and negative uh, uh, sections are coming in. Um, and again, you can actually click in the timeline. You can click on that green or negative. It will jump to the transcript or you can see it in here in this list view. You can click on it and it will jump only it will jump to the transcript and also to the timeline. So you can listen just to the positive or negative uh, part of the call. So for so quality managers, incredibly powerful tool. And there's a lot more tools coming down the pipeline or already in in the application to try and streamline that process for you even further. Okay. Um, next one, uh, work work knowledge based Dutch language support. So in the previous uh, week, I talked and showed how you can create knowledge based articles. Uh, well, now you can create them for uh, the Dutch clientele or the Dutch Dutch language. So that whole um, part of the uh, European uh, nation there. Uh, can now uh, take advantage of these powerful tools. Deprecations. Um, so back in October of last year, Genesis announced that they're purchasing more IP ranges. It looks like they're pushing back that date to March 1st. So you're watching this and this change has already been taking place. Um, so again, that just means they're expanding the region. Genesis is expanding um, the areas and more uh, AWS regions to support these very powerful tools for contact centers and can reports deprecation updates. So we've got some feedback from some of our clients saying, hey, where's this report? Where's that report? And so we've had to um, uh, tell them that these can reports are being removed and being integrated into the performance views. Um, so this particular announcement here is just um, keeping keep people remind reminding them and um, what is the updated plan for this. So on June um, 2022, uh, Genesis Cloud announced the migration of client responses to dynamic um, uh, views, performance views. So it looks like on June 22, or that's when they announced it here. Um, but now if we just go back and see here, if you click on that, um, by September 20th, all those can responses are going to be migrated over and that menu option will no longer be there. So I advise everyone to go to this particular um, link and look at this table comparison table to see which report you're using and what is the appropriate performance view to work from. All right, let's move on now to February 22nd uh, releases. Right. So for communicate, require the WebRTC media helper. Uh, telephony administrators uh, can now require the use of WebRTC helper when administrators enable um, the setting. Users must have and activate the connected media helper to receive calls. So this is if you're in an environment uh, like a virtual desktop environment and um, you have this running but Genesis Cloud or the agent would forget to um, launch it. Well, now you can mandate that through settings to make sure that this helper is running um, so uh, there's no degradation of voice quality and um, performance issues when it comes to using the WebRTC tool. Okay. Um, WebHID technology for uh, Jabra headsets re-enablement. 
So back last year in December, Genesis released a feature to install and use uh, Web HID with headsets for the Chrome browser. Uh, but due to some issues here, Genesis uh, removed that feature, uh, but now they've re-enabled it. Um, this feature allows um, users of Jabra headsets like myself uh, to be able to control, uh, use the uh, phone controls on my headset to hang up a call, put myself on mute from my headset and not having to click on the particular um, uh, appropriate button in the UI. Okay. Inside the contact center, improved interval granularity for specific time spans during performance views. Um, so Genesis Cloud Supervisors Managers can select a different interval length for a selected period of time for a scheduled report. This feature gives you more control over the exported data and more granular uh, insight into the exported data. So if I go ahead and click on exporting view data and um, in here. So when I go ahead and schedule my export, my these are now my new options here. So um, I can select granularity uh, minutes as a particular hour, day, time and week, much more granular. Um, so when I get that report, this is now will be my interval that that data is represented against. Okay, a continuing theme of exports and scheduling reports, contact center managers can now set recommended completion dates for development and feedback modules. So um, when uh, with the learning module, and you're creating these um, learning tools and these learning elements within the Genesis Cloud, um, you can specify recommended completion dates, not completed by or, or mandate when they need to do that. But if you had deadlines, learning deadlines um, for larger BPOs, for example, here you have a product being rolled out and you need your agents to go through this training by this date um, so you can launch this product um, on a particular date. Um, and you're using Genesis to manage that learning. Um, when you create those modules, you can specify completion dates. Okay. Um, so very powerful um, being able to mobilize a large group of agents, being able to uh, deliver training uh, through Genesis Cloud and being able to streamline and hit those target dates, incredibly important for the business. And also just want to add there, um, there is also a way to actually plot or kind of kind of carve this uh, the signs uh, the assigned modules to the agent schedules directly and you can also get you can also get uh, so if your organization is using uh, wfm right on the gc3 license or the wm add-on um you can actually schedule uh, the work the working on the on a module that you have for an agent depending on what their availability looks like and what the forecast looks like which is also a really neat feature because uh, most of the times whenever there is something that you want your agents to kind of look at or read or finish a quiz or whatever uh, you're probably going to want to schedule that out because if you don't and if you just leave it you know do it in your free time do it when you whenever you're idle um, there might be calls interrupting that process and the agents not being um, in the best possible headspace in order to to kind of kind of kind of read over that article or just do that quiz or whatever might be the case right so i think that this is a great uh, great addition to this and kind of the last piece in terms of okay operations are now pretty much done from my personal opinion um, in in Genesis Cloud, basically. Interesting. OK, so I actually didn't know about that WFMP, so um, that's actually I maybe want to get into it quickly here. But first, uh, this is where you'll be able to specify the completion date and recommended time to complete that. Um, so when you create a new module, that's where you'll set it. OK, next one here is the scorecard tab improvements in the agent activity view. So when an agent opens up their scorecard tab in the performance views, I'll get there in a moment here. Um, it's an improvement there on the agent being able to see their particular scorecard. So uh, changes include better coloring, different shapes and colors. This change does not affect the workflow, the functionality of the view. So um, quickly here. Um, so 
the prerequisites. Um, so those are the what you need to, to see there. And so now if I go into my activity view and I go to my scorecard view, um, some of the improvements are, um, like, like they mentioned here, uh, better improved uh, AI here, or so not AI, uh, the, the icons and colors, uh, just to make it a bit more usable uh, for this particular scorecard of, of uh, the gamification or WEM features of Genesis Cloud. And just a couple of other features now that have been removed. So uh, Journey Customer Cookie um, coming up in May. Um, this particular cookie that is related to this API uh, is uh, no longer is no longer is no longer going to be provided by the Customer Journey Cookie. Um, so you can go ahead and read up on that if you're if you're using that for that particular feature in Genesis Cloud. Genesis Cloud Legacy Dialog Engine Deprecation. So there's a new, uh, there's new uh, a Dialog Engine, and the Dialog Engine in general is what's driving all of the AI processes in Genesis Cloud, like we talked about in the previous weeks. So the the older version is being deprecated, and it's being replaced with the Genesis Dialog Engine Bot Flows, and the Digital Bot Flows uh, Dialog Engine. Okay. Uh, customer journey tab replacement. Genesis is removing the original customer's journey tab in predictive engagement. And um, they're using now when a customer does connect um, to an agent, um, the external contacts database uh, is being utilized. Uh, so from the agent workspace um, in these particular views here, um, well, you'll be able to see this where you'll be able to see the predictive engagement is under external contacts sessions um, area. Okay. And then um, knowledge work page. So version one has been deprecated and um, it's being replaced now with the version two of knowledge workbench. Yeah. So that ends February uh, releases. So if you have any questions, um, comments, please leave them down uh, in the YouTube uh, chat channel. Again, please remember to like and subscribe these videos so we can reach more um, Genesis Cloud users. Alex and Randall, anything else to say before we sign off? No, I'm more than upward. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, thanks everyone for watching this month and looking forward to um, interacting with you again uh, next month in March. Take care. Bye-bye.